Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are climbing the face of a steep cliff on the planet Saturn in pursuit of two criminals. At one side of them, a great waterfall thunders down a thousand feet to the valley below. Kogar must have reached the top, Commander. I don't see him. They went up the cliff like a couple of mountain goats yeah. and with hardly any footholds. The God happy there's a rock falling. Huh? Wow, smoke and rockets, that was close. There are more coming. Press close to the cliff. Hey, it looks like the whole top of the mountain is coming down on us. Hogarth's work. He started a landslide. He's right on top of us. What are we going to do? We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Giant Bubble. You can't buy it anywhere, gang. Today is positively the last time we can make this sensational offer. I'm speaking of... The Space Patrol Spaceophone. The magic phone you can carry anywhere. The magic phone from mysterious outer space. The magic phone created in the secret laboratories of the Space Patrol. The Space Patrol Spaceophone. Imagine you can talk on it to someone a straight 50 feet away. Complete with two blue and yellow plastic spaceophones. Complete with 50 feet of communication cord. Complete with secret briefing sheet. But remember now, today is absolutely the last time we can make this unusual offer. The Space Patrol Spaceophone. To get the whole set, here's what you do. Buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an Instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in continental U.S. and may be withdrawn at any time. That's an instant Ralston box top and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. In Commander Corey's central office at Space Patrol headquarters on Terra, Cadet Happy is puzzling over some reports from the security section as Buzz enters. Oh, I can't make head or tails of this thing. Happy, has Dr. Berman been in? Huh? Oh, I uh, beg your pardon, sir. What would you say? Have you seen Dr. Berman? He was to meet me here. Oh, no, sir. He hasn't been in. Uh, did the appropriation go through? Yes, Happy. I just got the Secretary General's approval. That ought to make Dr. Berman just about the happiest man in the solar system. Mm, yes, sir. Which, judging by your expression, is more than can be said for you. What's the trouble, huh? Well, Major Robertson asked me if I'd check over these reports of intercepted messages, and I haven't been able to make much headway. Uh, there's unidentified space phone signals from Saturn. Uh-huh. All I can figure out is that the broadcasts seem to follow a time pattern, and they're in perfectly plain English, but, well, they just don't make sense. I know. You know one word keeps popping up in several of the messages. Uh, that is, if it is a word, uh, Gleck. Now, what in the universe is Gleck? No one else around here seems to know either. Well, all I can gather is that whoever is sending the messages doesn't like Gleck. And one message says, suggest getting rid of Gleck at source. Mm -hmm. Well, forget about it. Turn the folder back to Robbie. Yes, sir. Commander Corey? Oh, yes, Dr. Berman. Come in. Thank you. Happy, this is Dr. Berman, the inventor of a new process of constructing atmosphere shells. Oh, I heard about it. Yeah, it's something to do with blowing a big bubble out in space, isn't it? Well, that's right, young man. A bubble of transparent electroplast. Dr. Berman's method might entirely do away with the old cumbersome method of constructing atmosphere shells section by section and sealing them together. With electroplast, sir? Yes, cadet. With a strong plastic developed in a plant on Venus, which has the peculiar property of remaining in liquid state when powerful electromagnetic waves of a certain frequency are penetrating it. Oh, I get it. You blow a bubble with it out in the vacuum of space and while the stuff is soft. Exactly. When the magnetic waves are cut off due to the cold... The electroplast hardens almost immediately. Hey, it's almost like freezing a soap bubble. <laughs> nice comparison, Cadet. However, we've never quite been able to freeze a soap bubble. To my great regret, they always break. 
Well, maybe this will cheer you up, Doctor. The Secretary General has approved the appropriation as requested. Splendid. As I understand it, you're authorized to go ahead and construct a shell for the Venus satellite. The Venus satellite? Yes, sir. But the satellite is only a mile in diameter. It'll be completely enclosed by an electroplastic shell. Hey, that's great, but... Oh, wait a minute. You blow up the shell out in space, right? That's right. Far enough away from a planet so the electroplast will form a perfect sphere. Uh-huh. But how do you get the satellite inside the sphere? We cut the shell in half. Then several powerful spaceships move the two halves to the satellite, and the two parts are sealed. Then we install a space lock, and we've got a small, low-gravity world. Uh, Commander, I hate to rush off, but I'm very anxious to get back to Venus and get the project underway. Of course, Doctor. If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. Thank you. My chief problem at first is to get several thousand cubic feet of Gleck out into space. Several thousand cubic feet of what? Gleck. Oh, uh, you wouldn't know. Gleck is a technical slang for electroplast. I see. Well, where did the term come from? Oh, I don't know. You know how it is with slang? Probably some technician got tired of saying electroplast and invented the word Gleck. The term caught on. Well, goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye, Doctor. Hey, Commander, uh, hadn't we better tell him about the messages? No, Happy, not yet. Yeah, but one of those messages said, get rid of Gleck at the source. I know. And the source is Venus. Mm, then someone on Saturn wants to wreck the doctor's project. I'll have Robbie assign a full monitoring crew to the Saturn frequencies. We're going to blast off for Venus and keep an eye on the plant itself. It's dark enough now, Drovic. Let's get over to the tunnel. Okay. You better watch your step with that explosive. It won't take much of a jar to set it off. How much time have we? Mm, exactly ten minutes before the tunnel car comes out of the underground plant. But I can assure you we're going to be away from the plant area when the cargo of electroplast goes up. Cargo, I'm surprised there aren't any guards patrolling the ground. Why should there be? Now, who, who would want to wreck Dr. Berman's project? Well, he shouldn't have sold out to him. With your half-interest in the electroplast process, he could have made millions of credits. I got out because I thought he was on the wrong track. He wanted me to think that, so I would sell out. Sure, Colgate. But sure. I'll fix him. Oh, here are the tracks. We just put the explosive on the rails? Great. I've got a better idea. See that flat car off on the siding? Put the explosive on that and push it into the tunnel. Yeah, great idea. The tunnel blown up, Berman can't get any electroplast out of the plant for weeks. That's going to be a job shoving that heavy car, though, so we'd better get started. Hold it, half. This is where the foreman saw the men. There they go, sir, over that small ridge. And that's where the tunnel comes out, the lower levels of the plant. Tunnel? Yes. The tracks lead to the spaceport where the electroplast is pumped aboard cargo ships. Well, what would they be doing out there this time of night? Well, let's find out. The odd foreman thought they were on some special detail. Well, it seems to me if they were on legitimate business, they'd carry a tunnel yeah. lights. Keep yours off until I tell you to turn it on. Yes, sir. All right. Now, shove the car. <sighs> It's as heavy as if it were on Jupiter. Once we get it moving, it won't be so bad. How far are we going to push it? Just inside the tunnel. The track has a downhill grade. The car will go. All right, Happy, turn on your light. Yes, sir. It's colder. Somebody's seen us. Keep shoving only a few more feet, and it will be on the main track. Hold it a minute. What are you men doing? Now, why don't you mind your own business? Get that flat car off the main track. Here comes the tunnel car. Let's go, Drowie. No, you don't. Come back here. Let him go, Happy. We've got to shove this car back in the siding quickly. Yes, sir. I hate to let him get away, but we've got to clear the tracks. Uh, tunnel car is coming pretty fast, uh, sir. A couple more feet. Uh, uh, it's clear, sir. The switch. We've got to throw the switch, or the tunnel car will be derailed right into us. Hold your light here. Yes, sir. Wow, that was close. Yeah. Yeah, we made it. Just barely. Look what was on this flat car. A can of explosives. Come on, Happy. We'll go to the main gate and give some orders. Nobody's going to leave the plant. The tunnel car got through. They cleared the tracks. I've got to look at them as we ran out. They're space patrol. Man. Space patrol? They probably got the plant surrounded. How are we going to get out? Oh, wait a minute. Look up ahead there. There is Berman. How can you tell? By his walk. There. No, I'm sure of it. He just passed the window in the blockhouse. Let's get away from here before he recognizes us. I got you. a better idea. Berman will get us out of here, even past the space patrol. How? Oh, he's going into the blockhouse. Let's follow him and see if he's alone. What's in the blockhouse? 
Test equipment for the black experiments. That's where I got the explosive. Come on. But quietly, take it easy. Done this all, Drowick. Okay, Captain, please. Quiet. Berman is in the lab. Yes, thank you. Captain, this is Dr. Berman. Would you locate Commander Corey for me? I don't know where he is, but... Oh, he is? Put him on, please. He's talking on the intercom. Commander, Dr. Berman, I... What? The tunnel. Good heavens. Thank you, Commander. That would have set the project back for weeks. Yes, I do have an idea who's behind this. Something happened earlier today that aroused my suspicion. Oh, the Russian man. I'll wait. Yes, Commander, but I'm not positive. I don't like to discuss this over the intercom. Yes, I know it's urgent, but uh, can you come to the blockhouse? Fine, Commander. Let's get him. Kogar! Uh, don't reach for that intercom, Berman. Yes, it was me. You tried to blow up my plants. Keep the ray gun on him, Droy. Yes, Berman, you double-crossing swindler. I didn't wreck your plan, but you'll never build an atmosphere shell. We were friends once, Colgar. I can't understand this. Oh, can't you? You tricked me into thinking you were failing in your electroplast research, so I would sell. But that was your decision. I was trying to be honest with you. You walked out on me when I needed your help. We haven't time to argue with him, Colgar. You're right, Drowick. Berman, give me a pass so I can get out of the gate. A pass? Yes. The time stamp passed with your signature for Drowick and me. Say that we are being sent to Venus City for special work on the project. Come on! We don't have much time. Come on! Hurry up! Put your name on it. That's it. Koga! Someone's coming. Get behind the door. Berman, you stay where you are. And if you warn them, you'll regret it. Believe me. Right in here, Happy. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Berman. Oh, I didn't know you had company. Commander, I... Hey, Commander, look out! Stop. Look, him throw in. Give me that ray gun. I'll give you something just as good. Now, stay where you are. Drowick, hold the gun on them a minute. Where are you going? In the next room. I'm going to fix up a few chemicals that will turn this blockhouse into a blast furnace. Then we'll lug these meddling space patrolmen in here with Berman. You'll never get out the gate. No, you don't watch it, Corey. <laughs> What happened? Corey got clever. I cracked him with the gun butt. All right. Lock them in there. First, disconnect the intercom. Okay. Uh, take care of... <clears throat> Good. And by the time we're out of the gate, this blockhouse will be blown to pieces. And Corey will be... We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, it's a fire, a four-alarm blaze on Terra. But, hey, what's the matter with that atomic fire control power unit? Oh, too bad. It's trying to get along on ordinary fuel. But wait, now that fire control officer is filling up the tank with super fuel. Wow, listen to that fire control unit go now. It's supercharged, that's what. Supercharged with super fuel. Yes, sir, boys and girls. To really get going, the answer is super fuel. That's why Buzz Corey eats a good breakfast with the bite sized super cereals that help to supercharge you. And I mean rice checks and wheat checks. Now, there's a couple of swell tasting cereals. And boy, both of them have that modern bite sized design for easy eating. So, gang, get a quick start in the morning like Buzz Corey does. Eat a good breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal and get supercharged. Get them today. Rice checks, wheat checks. Colgar and Drovic are determined to destroy Dr. Berman's plans to employ a new process for constructing atmosphere shells. The two criminals have knocked Buzz, Happy, and the doctor unconscious, locked them in a blockhouse on the grounds of Dr. Berman's Venus plant. They have also prepared chemicals that will blast the interior of the building. Now, as Kolgar and Drovic head for the main gate, Buzz and Happy try to break their way out through the door. It's 
the cinch. We can't break the door down. Let's see if we can rouse Dr. Berman. Maybe he's got a key on him. Yes, sir. Doctor. Doctor. Commander. Did they get away? Yes. Do you have a key to the door? We're locked in. Locked in? Yes. And there's going to be an explosion any second. They wrecked the intercom so we can't call for help. My, my keys? Where, where are my keys? They must have taken them. Hey, Commander. How about the window? It isn't very big, but I think if we smashed it, we could get through. And this metal chair ought to do the trick. Yeah. It's no use. And hit it again. Yeah. You can't break it, Commander. It's electroplast. Electroplast? Yes. My discovery. And it's sealing us up in a death trap. Wait. Didn't you say it turns to liquid when electromagnetic waves strike it? A certain frequency, yes. It... Commander, you've got it. There's a generator in this room. Where is it? This cabinet. Do you need any help? After I set the dials, throw the switch on the lower panel. Wait. Now. <laughs> I've got it focused toward the window. Watch it. How long will it take to work? Just a few seconds. It's starting to melt. Hey, it's just like wax. I think we can get out now. Happy, help me slide the desk under the window. Hurry. Yes, sir. All right, Dr. Berman, you first. I'm really not much good at this sort of thing. If you don't get out, you'll never be any better. Just dive out, doctor. It's not much of a drop. All right. Okay, Happy? Yes, sir. All right, Doctor. Look out below. Here I come. All clear, Commander. Go ahead. All right. Let's get away from here before it blows up. Wow. We got away just in time. Commander... If you hadn't thought of that electromagnetic wave when you did... You're lucky you had the equipment in the lab, Doctor. Happy, let's get to the main gate and see if our friends have escaped. We were too late, Doctor. The guard let them through. Yeah, but we'll get out on all planets alarm. They won't get far. I think he was once my friend. Dr. Berman, I know this has been a terrible experience for you, but I've got to ask some questions. Do you know where Koger might go? No, I don't. Some time ago, I heard he was living on Saturn. Saturn's a big planet. Any particular area? I don't know. You'll have the Saturn spaceports watched. Now, Doctor, is there anything destroyed in the blockhouse which would delay the construction of the shell around the Venus satellite? Uh, fortunately, no. And you can go ahead and direct the project out in space. Yes. I want to do it right away. The lab ship is ready. Good. Happy and I are going to keep an eye on things, just in case our friends Kolgar and Drovic decide to try something else. One thousand DUs outside the satellite orbit, sir. All right, Happy. Cut our velocity and keep pace with the satellite in its orbit. Yes, sir. That's yeah, sixteen hundred hours universal start time, Happy. It should be about ready to blow the bubble up any time now. There it goes, Kolga. It's getting bigger. We better not get any closer to Berman's bubble. Let's watch it from here. I didn't think it'd work, but look at it. We're going to wait till it's nearly finished. And blast the shell with a cosmic low-frequency missile. Yeah. But first we take care of Berman's control ship. The shell will be an easy target after Berman's out of the way. How did he get out of the blockhouse? We saw the explosion. Well, he won't get out of this explosion. Keep his lab ship in your side, bro. The shell doesn't seem to be getting any bigger, sir. It is, though, Hap. Happy. Starboard view scope. <laughs> A private cruiser. Yes. Heading in toward the lab ship. Let's go. Still in the side, cool guy. We're too far away. We can't risk a miss. Hold your fire. Well, if we get too close, he may spot us. So what? Those laboratory ships can't maneuver very fast. Cool guy. Our rear view scope. Space patrol ship coming in fast. Well, we've been lining up on Berman. They've been lining up on us. To change back to it quickly. This is Commander Corey aboard Terra 5 calling the unmarked private cruiser. You're in a restricted space sector. Acknowledge immediately and change your vector. What do we do? Keep going. Commander Corey calling Colgar aboard unmarked private cruiser. Cut your velocity and acknowledge or we'll fire. Cut our velocity, Drovich. I'll talk to Corey. They've cut velocity, sir. But he's still keeping close to the lab ship. Better cut our own velocity. Don't get too close, Happy. Yes, sir. Hold them an automatic range finder. Commander, there's a flash from their ship. They're firing at us. Kicking on automatic evasion control. Yes, sir. Here comes another one. Wow, that was close. Shall I let him have it, sir? Not yet, Happy. 
They can't have more than three cosmic missiles in that small ship. Well, that was it, sir. Can I let them have it now? Well, there isn't much point in firing on an unarmed enemy, is there? Well, no, but we can't let them get away. I don't intend to, but I want them to think they are. Well, they're barreling off on a new vector now. That's fine. Let them gain some distance. Kick the viewscope up to maximum sensitivity. Yes, sir. You'll find out just where Mr. Colgar is going in such a hurry. Good shooting, Drovic. You knocked out the great Commander Corey. That must have been that last shot that did it. I didn't see his ship explode, though. He's out of the fight. Probably punctured his hull. Too bad we haven't just one more cosmic missile left. It would be a cinch to knock out Berman's lab ship. Yeah, by now, Berman's probably alerted all space patrol units in the Venus area. You're right. We'll head for Saturn and pick up some more cosmic missiles at our Ortak Valley hideout. And then we'll be back. They're still in the viewscope, sir. Apparently heading for Saturn. Now, yeah, that checks. We picked the original messages up from Gleck about there. Notify Saturn Space Control to order all units to watch for an unmarked ship, but not to challenge it. After all he's tried to do to us, Colgar is our baby. Space Control, Saturn. Calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. Corey here. Go ahead. Commander, an unmarked private cruiser entered Saturn atmosphere ten minutes ago. It's been under constant surveillance. Has it landed yet? Uh, it hasn't approached any city, sir. Our last report, less than a minute ago, said the ship was headed for the Ortok Valley region at steady decrease in altitude. They let down in the mountain area into the central Ortok Valley. Order all ships to keep clear of the Ortok Valley until further notice. Corey out. Check Ortok Valley coordinates, Happy. Yes, sir. Terrifically low ceiling, sir. Yes. Keep her steady, Happy. We've got thousand foot cliffs on either side of us. Yeah, I'm checking them through the infrared view scope, sir. I've got something on the ground scope, Happy. Cut our velocity. It's a spaceship. Yes. The one we're looking for. Their landing ladder is down, so they probably aren't in the ship. I'd just like to see them try to take off now. Set her down, Happy. Oh, God. Listen. We are a spaceship landing. Space patrol? It's Terra 5. Corey tricked us. What do we do? We have no missiles aboard, and we can't get back to the ship anyhow. That isn't time. I know. Up the cliff, huh? Climb that cliff, it's straight up and down, a thousand feet high. I know a fairly easy way up. If Corey doesn't see us start, he'll never suspect we took that way out. Come on, throw it before Corey gets out of the ship. Two sets of footprints lead over here, Happy. Yes, sir. They lead away from the ship, and there aren't any coming back. Apparently, they're headed for the cliff. They may be holed up in a cave, so be careful. Yes, sir. Hey, they end right at the cliff. The ground is harder here. Still, we make footprints, so they they climb the cliff. What? Why, it's practically a wall. Uh, look here. Some fresh dirt has been kicked away. Well, if they can climb it, we can. Sir, listen. The roaring sound. Probably a waterfall farther up the canyon. Okay, Hap, let's get going. Go on, Drovich. Keep moving. Cool, God. I can't, I can't get a foothold. We can't go back. Corey and the killer down that way up. It's a 500-foot drop. I'd rather have Corey get me than slip off this cliff. Grab hold of that overhanging rock. And swing your foot around this barge. That is almost a path from here on up. Go on, I can't get past you. So either move or I'll kick you off. No, no, I'll go on. Watch out for this soft shale. You'll slide off the cliff. Oh, I thought I was finished. See? You start at a miniature landslide. Yeah. That gives me an idea. Start pushing these rocks down. These boulders. Come on, get busy. Top commander, I don't see them. They went up the cliff like a pair of mountain goats. Look out, Happy. Rocks are falling. Look. Smoke and rockets. That was close. There are more coming. Press close to the cliff. Hey, it looks like the whole top of the mountain's coming down at us. That's Bogart's work. He's got a landslide. What are we going to do? Look at the ledge of these over there toward the waterfall. Hurry. Be careful. Yes, sir. Yes, but look at the cliff. Now there's no way up or down. The falls on one side and 800-foot drop on the other. We're stuck. Wait, 
Look, behind the falls. What? Behind the falls, there's an opening there. You're right. And there's a path behind the falls. Watch your foothold. These rocks are wet and slippery. Well, I guess that landslide took care of him. Yeah, but how are we going to get down to our ship? It's a long way, but it's safer. Come on, let's get going. The ship sure looks good. Yeah. Get in and let's blast off. What's your hurry? Corey! That's right, and don't try anything, either of you. The last slide. I saw it crash right on top of the path. Uh huh. So did we, from behind the waterfall. There's a nice, easy path the other side of the fall. Yeah, a straight and narrow path. Something you ought to try sometime. Ha! <laughs> An exciting preview of next week's thrilling Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Right now, gang, this is Space Patroller Dick Tufel. And Commander Corey. We're here to tell you that today is the last time we can offer you the Space Patrol Spaceophone. You get a whole set, gang, complete with two Spaceophones. Fifty feet of communication cords. And secret briefing sheets. So don't wait. Send for it today. Just like talking on the telephone. It's the magic phone you can carry anywhere. Looks exactly like the Spaceophones my Space Patrollers use on Terra. Talk on it to someone a straight 50 feet away. Use it indoors or outdoors. But remember, today is the last time we can make this offer. Offer. So don't wait. Send for your Space Patrol Spaceophone set today. Now remember, you get two blue and yellow plastic Spaceophones. One for you and one for the person you're talking to. And a secret Space Patrol briefing sheet. Now to get the whole set, do this. Buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then with your name and address, send 25 cents and an Instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686. St. Louis, Missouri. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. Buzz and Happy are stranded on the Martian desert, a hundred miles from the nearest city. They've just come to an expanse of tiny green plants carpeting the desert for miles. Something's wrong with my throat, Commander. It feels tight. It's hard to breathe. Mine's the same way, Happy. It couldn't be the dust coming up from the ground, sir. No, it came from the plants. Every time we take a step, the plants shoot out spores, poisoning the atmosphere. It's getting worse. You no, know, it's still worse. These are poisonous lichens. Poison? What are we going to do, sir? We can't go back. No. If we go on, these plant spores will paralyze our breathing muscles. We'll suffocate. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Electronic Burglar, when wheat checks, rice checks, and good hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol... <laughs> And now, a word from Commander Buzz Corey. You know, gang, one of the greatest health steps in history was the organization of the National Blood Program of the American Red Cross. A program started in the belief that Americans would give blood to help their neighbors in peace, just as they did for fighting men in war. How would you like to help these people get more blood donations? Here's how you can help. Join my Space Patrol blood boosters. You help your country, and you have a lot of fun. So, boys and girls, join the blood boosters today. Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present... The new exciting Space Patrol! And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station.